thank you for all the potluck things. That was delicious. Yeah. So good. So good. So thanks for that. And uh, it was just a nice time to hang out. It's good. Uh, I think I'm going to pray us in, unless somebody would like to come up and pray us in. Anyone? 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 Oriana, would you? Could you come up here? And do a <laughs> See, I, yes. sen I sensed it. I, it was. I was actually gonna say. I know. I know. Just <laughs> uh, Yeah, Father. Um, thank you. Thank you for our time for each of us to just be here and slow down and eat together. Yeah, I just pray that we would just be able to know your um, rich love for us, God, and that each of us truly would be rooted and grounded more in that love, God, and um, just grow that this is just, um, we've just experienced a little bit of, of your goodness and your love, and we just, and then we all want more, and we need more of you, God, so we just welcome that and just ask that you would continue to you know, breathe on us and grow us and teach us how to love each other God teach us how to to love your word and to encourage each other and just to be together and um, yeah thank you for this time that we've all had on Wednesday nights and um, help us to continue to cultivate uh, being together and even eating together and praying together and encouraging each other and just doing um, and living life together and what that looks like, God. And, and I just pray a blessing on tonight and on Leela and um, what's on her heart, God. And just, yeah, bless each one of these precious ladies. And we just thank you for the time to slow down and be with you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are pretty much done with our study. So let's do... Um, the verse one more time that we've been concentrating on, Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. That Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep. I added that. Your roots will grow down <laughs> into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. So rich. So we're going to do a quick walkthrough, overview of what we've already discussed, because it's just so good. There's so much. And these videos I've been doing are on YouTube if you want to review or have somebody that maybe couldn't come and is interested in the material, it's on there, so. Week one, we talked about, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit, and Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. And we talked about what unlimited meant and the infinity loop the universe, the vastness of that, the infinity 99 <laughs> joke. When I was a kid, there is no higher number than infinity 99. And how that the Lord's love for us is infinite. No beginning and no end. And how that the Lord wants to dwell in us and how dwelling was making a permanent home in us, not just visiting in that concept which is beautiful. Then in week two, we talked about the roots growing down into God's love and keeping us strong. This painting's amazing again. Oriana, thank you. Very inspiring. <laughs> we talked about the roots. Our friend Dave, Dave Deschler, he taught us about roots and what they did um, and how his little quote about how if we want to improve the health of the tree, we gotta think of the root system. And then we talked about the winds, the winds, the trials of life, and how the winds actually make the roots strong, and uh, the trials in life, and the strength, and roots down in Christ, and 
how that can actually be a blessing. And then in week three, we talked about verse 18, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. And we had scripture verses for those, and then the big question of how in the world are we supposed to do that? That's huge. How are we supposed to do that? And how that, the cross of Christ, is how long, is how wide, is how deep, is how high. And how that God's love is wide enough to include every person. And God's love is long enough to last through all eternity. God's love is deep enough to reach the worst sinner. And God's love is high enough to bring us to heaven, to be with him forever. Just so cool. This week, we wrap it up. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life, potluck. I added that part. <laughs> fullness of life and power that comes from God. We did experience potluck together, which I think is awesome because as we discussed in week two, we can only truly understand the love of God in relationship with one another. Like that, that is his design, is that it's not just just me and God alone. It's we are all the bride of Christ. We are all the body of Christ. And there's dynamics to his love that we can't experience on our own. So in, um, let's go here. In the uh, ESV version, I like how it says, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. In uh, Dave Gusick's commentary, he writes, To know the love of Christ, Paul wrote of something we can know. This isn't speculation, guesswork, emotions, or feelings. This is something to know. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul asked God to fill these Christians unto all the fullness of God. The word unto is a better translation than the word with is what Dave is saying. So we, we see that Paul wanted Christians to experience life in Christ, the fullness of God. Does someone have Colossians 2, 9 that they can read for us? Dun, dun, dun. Oh, Linda, thank you. One second, let me bring this to you. Just one minute. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Just nine? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Okay, so the fullness of Christ, the fullness of God, rather, is Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ. So Christians are to experience the life in Jesus Christ, the fullness of God, and to be filled up. Um, in their capacity with Jesus. Adam Clark, uh, he was an early theologian who was chiefly known for writing a commentary on the Bible. He completed it in 1831. It took him 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. And it was a primary uh, Methodist theological resource for two centuries. So this guy was considered, you know, one of the great minds in the past. And he's quoted uh, when referring to this scripture among all the great sayings in this prayer, in Paul's prayer, in Ephesians 3, this is the greatest. To be filled with God is a great thing. To be filled with the fullness of God is still greater. But to be filled with all the fullness of God utter bewilders the sense and confounds the understanding. That's like a, a next, next level. Like, to be filled with God, that's a great thing. To be filled with the fullness of God is greater. But to be filled with all the fullness of God just is more than we can understand, which is which is what this scripture says. Like, how can we even comprehend? So this whole prayer in uh, Ephesians is meaty, meaty. But yet its meaning is pretty simple. If you can simplify God a 
Jesus. I mean, how do you do that, right? <laughs> but the fullness of God in summation is found in Christ. In our relationship with him, in our growth in him, in our being rooted in him, in our love for him, in his love for us, in our love for each other. So that is what this whole piece that we're talking about really is summed up in our relationship with Christ. I found just a quick video. It's actually probably from a TikTok or a reel. Um, his, his name is Pastor Philip Wheely, and he's from Living Hope uh, Church in British Columbia, Canada. And he is walking through the same set of scriptures that we were. And he just is really eloquent and just has just a few sentences to say about it that I thought was really good. So I wanted to share that with you. The goal of every single Christian is to be completely filled with God. That's our goal. That's what we want. So that his character, his attributes, and his love define everything about us. If you refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to fill your entire life, what you're actually doing is refusing to allow Christ to dwell in your heart, to be the Lord, to be at home and comfortable in your heart. That's what you're doing. And then the less you will know the love of Christ. And the less you know it, the less you'll be rooted in it. The less you're rooted in it, the less you will comprehend it and grasp it. And the less you will then experience that love. And then so your experience of being filled with all the fullness will seem like a famine because you're just not changing, you're not growing, your capacity is staying the same. There is no filling going on. The whole life of a Christian must be governed by love, the love of Christ. The absence of love is the presence of evil and iniquity. That's what it is. There's no halfway house here. We need to be filled with the love of Christ and walking in the love of Christ. So I just, when I found that, I'm like, man, see, people say it so much better than us, but that's, I mean, what a great thing that we, great resource we have, right, is YouTube and, and commentaries and, and things where when someone says something and you witness to it, but it's so much more eloquent than you can put together and you're just like, yes, that, <laughs> that's what I want, God. That's what I want to experience, God. That's what I feel you saying. That's, you know. So I have really enjoyed cracking into all of these <laughs> verses and looking at that. So I want to just finish out by finishing that chapter, verses 20 and 21. And this is how Paul finishes the prayer. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. So who? To him who is able, not me, <laughs> not me. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, his power, to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever, amen. What an awesome, what an awesome ending to a letter to a church. I imagine that, you know, after walking, because Paul's letters aren't always um, roses. They're not always easy. Sometimes they're very, they're corrective. And, but this passage is just like wind in the sails. And when he ends it with just this East Central Translation, hey, don't worry. God's going to do it in you. It's God doing it in you. I know this, this list that I've sent, these things that I've you know, written that you need to think about, these exhortations and these corrections and these goals and these, these guidelines, I want you to tell you it, that it's God in you that's going to bring it to pass. Now to him who is able, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, which is him. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. That's how you end. Yeah. That's how you end the four weeks. With the assurance of who God is and that God's desire is to grow good things in me. And that's his work. My job is to be obedient, to be willing to let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do in me. Amen? Amen. Thank you guys for, for coming. Thank you, Will. Yeah. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Praise God. You, know, you put a lot of work into it, mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. Oh, you, 
it's actually my joy. You know what I mean? It's like, I knew when I quit my job, obviously, there was a reason, and this is part of the reason. And so I find great joy of like, oh yeah, I actually, I actually get to do this. Like, this is it's joyful for me, so. Thank you, Jesus, for um, just the joy that you bring, God, the completeness and the contentment that can be found in you. Thank you for these four weeks that we've just been able to take a pause and read your word and really let it soak into our souls, into our hearts, and into our minds. Father, we ask, like your scripture says, that your water would wash us that it would give us um, new thoughts, that it would restructure how we view truth and who you are and who we are. Like Charity said, God, that you can reshape the way we view you and ourselves. Thank you, God, for Michael. Thank you for that sweet little boy. May he know your love all the days of his life, like I pray for my grandkids. May you know him all the days of your life. Thank you, Jesus, that um, each of us carries in us all of you, not parts of you, not pieces of you, that you've given yourself completely and fully to us. Father, may we step into that more and more. Teach us how to do that, God. Give us a love for your word. Give us uh, childlike faith to believe what you say, to believe what we read in your word, God, to believe that you have good things for us, for our families, for our friends, for our church, God. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our church. We pray that more and more you would bring souls. Because hmm. it's all for nothing if that's not happening. Thank you, Jesus, that you've placed within Jacob's well rich faith, uh, saints that have known you a long time, that are um, positioned and able to bring uh, discipleship and growth in new believers that you are bringing, God, and that we believe you will bring. Thank you, Jesus. That's a privilege, and we thank you for that, God. We pray that uh, in the days ahead that we will... Uh, be a stronger, more unified church that you will continue to grow that and stitch us together with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for all you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen.